loving God. So now, meron tayong loving thy neighbor. Yeah, loving thy neighbor. So, <clears throat> ang this couple, kanina couple yun ang sanita, ngayon, couple na naman. Uh, kaya nga empower the women. So, uh, mag, ang kanina nun, nalaman ko lang yung love story nila kanina. <laughs> yung love story nila kanina, sabi, um, went back, uh, way back, uh, 1964 ba yun? Ay! <laughs> no, no. 2004. Ba? Tama? No? 2004. Um, during that time, during that time, yung si bro, si bro, nag start na siyang mag-CLS noon. Uh, pero hindi niya pinapaalam sa wife, sa, sa, sa girlfriend niya, sa G. Tawag namin doon, GG, God's gift. So, hindi niya pinapaalam sa GG niya. Na every Sunday, bigla na lang siya nawawala. At 1 p.m., tapos tinatanong siya, Oh, anong ginagawa mo? Um, taking lessons, putong mo. Ah, <laughs> mandarin daw, di pa mandarin. Tapos, hanggang na na-reveal na nagsisiyanes pala siya. Without knowing na yung GG niya, Ah, uh, hindi. Nagahanap rin pa rin ng ano. Nag Marami na rin pa rin mga charismatics na ina-attend. So, nagkakahiyaan sila, pero isa lang pala din ang hinahanap nila. So, they started um, 2004. Tapos, 2004 si Brother and Tito na rin siya sa Hong Kong. Yeah. And then they have one daughter, yung cute kanyang daughter na ano, 4 years old. And then they joined SS, SFL 2005, CFC, Couples for Christ 2008. SFL is Singles for Life. Singles for Christ pa nun. And now they are serving the sis, uh, servants and handmaid ministries and SFL. SFL and hand, uh, uh, HFL pala. <laughs> okay. Sunday group yun. So, I would like to introduce to you first, uh, si Sister, si Sister Jenny Tan. <laughs> Sorry. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we share lang akong story. Can I speak like Tagalog na? Or Taglish? Or do we have? We have? Oh, Okay, I will speak in English. <laughs> okay. Um, actually, I was approached by Brother Joel. Uh, I forgot when. I think that was about around two months ago. And this is actually the first talk to a, to a bigger crowd because I'm so used to talking to a, to a small to smaller groups, the Singles for Life and the Handmaids for Life Sunday group in Chinua. And this is the first time. And then I said, uh, brother, pass. Because I don't think I can do it. And then he said, sis, obedience. And <laughs> God will provide. And then I was like, okay, okay. Okay, whatever. You, you just let me. And then uh, he called my husband, I think two days after. And he said, you have to speak in English. <laughs> and I was like, Okay, <laughs> I already said yes, so I have to speak in English, Brother Joel. Okay, and then the topic now is um, loving our neighbor. It's a very practical one, but uh, of course, it's not easy for all of us, even for us. And the next two, the next two scriptures that we're going to see. Uh, is actually the life changer that we have. It's, we call it life changers, the next two scriptures. The first one is, okay, so when asking what is the greatest commandment in the law, so coming from Jesus Christ himself, he said, love the Lord your God and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment and the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. And all the law and the prophets hang on to these two commandments. 
So it's like Jesus Christ himself summarized the Ten Commandments into two, which turned out to be this two. Actually, another sharing, actually, before we used to hate we, the two of us, actually. Because, you know, like when you're couples or boyfriends and girlfriends, you, you like, uh, you do like, talk, you sometimes talk about other people. Ay, makakainis si ganito. Si office mate ko ganito. Parang something like this. But after these two life changers, this is the first one and then the next one will follow. Uh, I hope every one of us here will try to think twice about how really it is to love God and, the, and our neighbors. Okay, so we're, I can say we're not perfect in this field or in this area, but we're better with Christ's grace. And then uh, the next one is, who here loves God? Come on. <laughs> who here loves God? Okay, so we all do love God, right? And who here does hate someone? Hate, dislike, <laughs> whatever? Okay. So the next scripture, the second life changer that we have, the second life changing scripture that we have says that whoever claims to love God yet hates a brother or sister is a liar. So for whoever does not love their brother and sister whom they have seen, na nakikita natin, hahawakan, nakakausap, cannot love God whom they have not seen. Imagine how difficult it is. We don't see God. We know Him, but we don't see Him physically. So how do we love Him? And He has given us this commandment. Anyone who loves God must also love their brother, brothers and sisters. And when they said brothers and sisters, He did not say only this group or only love only Catholics or love only those who are good to you. They didn't say that, so there's no condition in here. So next, we're going to see what Christian love is not. This actually came from, you know, a lot of studies before, like, uh, old SFC, new SFL. It's being, you know, transferred over or... People are actually like teaching it to a lot of people. You will actually teach this to a lot of other people after you come out of this room, hopefully. Okay, so the first one is, love is not only having positive feelings. Positive feelings. Pag in love ka, ang saya sayo mo. So parang everything is dreamy, everything is wonderful, flowers all around. Diba? Pero it's actually not always happy. It is not always dreamy. Love is actually a commitment. <clears throat> like It's like a, a good example of it is uh, marriage. When you get married, you actually choose to be with a person for the rest of your life. And there's no turning back because we don't believe in divorce and getting married again. Right? And then another is the love of a priest for the parishioners. Why would he love those parishioners? Because he's committed to God, that he will love God through serving people. He don't even know all of the parishioners, but why? Why, does, why is he doing the things that he's doing? And then the next is our love for friends, our, our parents, in-laws, etc., etc. Uh, okay, so for an, a good example for this is um, that it's not always dreamy and it's not always happy is the love of you know the the husband and wife. Why? For ex uh, you start dreamy, you start all wonderful, you start a very very much in love, happy. Ang tawag nila sa tagalog may spark. But when they get old, we can see that the spark. Let's see her like older, 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 older versions of herself the spark actually goes away, right? But you still choose to stay with each other. Why? 
because you are committed and because of love. That's already love. After the spark is done. Ah, uh, oh nga pala may nakalimutan ako. <laughs> Kalala ko siya. Sa iyo ha. Kalabot ka rin ko to choose for the rest of my life. And I honor him very much for, you know, pushing me to serve. I actually love to serve. But before, I always like to do, you know, the things that you do at the back. Prepare the food, call the participants, call the whoever will talk, and do those things. But he, he's very, very much, you know, like, you can do this. It's okay, you've seen a lot, you have a lot of experience. And I was like, you, you just talk, I'll support you, whatever you do, I'll support you. <laughs> if you need water, I'll give you water. But it doesn't, but for Christ, it doesn't work like that. And it's part of loving. Loving. I'm very nervous actually, but I feel brother from Brother Sab's play, prayer earlier, you're nervous, it's good. Because you're depending on the power of God, working on you to serve the people. And uh, it's actually, this is actually love. Actually, we're all here because of love. Why we are here? You want to know God. Why do you want to know God? Because you love God or you want to love God if not yet. Right? And why are all the service team here? Why are we all here? It's simply because of love. We love people that we don't know. But I'm sure after this, we will love each other more as brothers and sisters. So to give the number two thing, because we're like a tandem here, so I share, you share, whatever. So, uh, let me present to you my husband, Mark Tan. <laughs> that was not planned, actually. <laughs> uh, anyway, I'd like to, uh, I'd like to thank my uh, my ex girlfriend for introducing me. Now. Uh, actually, I also like to uh, to to. You know, to uh, thank everyone for, uh, for for being here, uh, like what she just shared. No? Um, I'm really very happy because uh, uh, we started out in the community uh, just like everyone else, and uh, after we got through the CLS and all these talks that you're hearing right now, uh, it is where we continue to grow uh, from serving from small things up to you know standing here in front and uh, witnessing the love of Christ. And right now, like, like this one, like giving this talk, uh, I'd like to also take this chance to honor my, uh, my wife for, uh, for, for, for taking up God's call. Anyway, back to the, back to the talk now. Uh, for number two, love is not always saying yes. <laughs> now, what does this mean? No? Uh, well, we can always think or some people have this misconception uh, right you love this person you always say yes to what he wants uh, daddy can you please give me this mommy can you please give me that perfect example for parents right but we all know as parents that that's not always a good thing amen, amen. right and another example could be uh, <laughs> Well, one other example could, could, could also be, for example, uh, you have a friend who is actually trying to borrow money from you, right? But if you know that he or she would be spending this on something not really good, not really godly, you know, but still you say yes to it, then that is not love, right? We know that you care for your friend, but if you know that he, will be, uh, he or she will be using the help that you've given him or her, to do bad things, then that is not exactly love. Amen? Amen. So clear on that so far. Okay, you're taking my uh, <laughs> my paper. Okay, right? So uh, love is not always saying yes. So this is, we, I think it's important to focus on this because we have, or more often than not, people have a wrong concept of a loving person who is always a nice guy or a nice girl who tries to please everybody. This is not it. Love is not pleasing everybody, but instead, love is righteous. That is why we say, love is not always saying yes. You say yes only to the things that do glory to God. And you say no to the things that do otherwise. 
Amen? Amen. Okay. Very good children. <laughs> All right. Uh, Number three. Okay. I'll go on. Uh, number, the third one. Love is not defensive. Right? Who here has already been betrayed before? Betrayed, it could be love. May nangaliwan. Friendship. Someone. <laughs> Mommy, I did not do anything. Huh? <laughs> no, I believe that everyone here, no? at one point in their lives, might have already been betrayed or have had their trust lost or shattered or broken by someone. No? Now, I'm sure that all of you will agree with me that it is difficult to bring back that love to that person, he or she, whomever she or he may be, to 100% again. Amen? Amen. Right? Is it because we are afraid to get hurt? Diba? I think it's human nature. You get burned once, uh, you'll try to minimize your risk or, or your exposure uh, later. And that actually prevents you from loving someone fully. Amen? Amen. Right? So, in saying so, in saying that love is not defensive, this just simply means that if you are truly loving someone, you love that person without any fear of what the consequences will be. And still, you give your, your all, 100%, right? Because no one said that love will be easy. In fact, it says here, love is a risky business, no? What if one person betrays you? What if your loved one dies? We all, we all maybe, maybe some people have already experienced this. Uh, you know, death is, death is some, something that, that can happen inevitably. Now, maybe I talked to uh, a couple of persons before in my office that uh, uh, we have this uh, popo or, or lola at home uh, that is very old already. And I'm, I'm telling this person, I say, yeah, maybe you should always spend your time with her, spend your time with her more, shower her with more love and all that. And his response to me was, Brother Mark, I don't want to because I'm afraid that if I get too attached, I will get hurt when she goes away, when she dies. But I told, you know, if, if, if this is your mentality, then you're not giving your 100% love. Amen? I hope, I hope that's clear enough for everybody. So, in loving someone, you always have to be prepared also to set yourself up for hurt. Because a hurt is inevitable with love. Okay? So that's, that's for this point. Love is not defensive. Okay. Then it says here, Christian love is not guaranteed to be painless. Right? But the pain is endured through commitment and the injuries will be healed through forgiveness. Amen? So, di ba, we always hear about, ah, I forgive you, but I'm not forgetting. Is that, do you think that's love? No. brother? No. <laughs> right. So, that is how difficult Christian love is. This is just, you know, starters pa lang tayo, nag-uumpisa pa lang tayo. Okay, on to the next one. Love is not self-seeking. What this means is that it is not self-centered. Love is not all about yourself, but instead about others but loving others. Always seeking how you will be able to serve your brothers or sisters more. How you will be able to help this someone out, this poor person, how you will be able to give happiness to someone who is sad at any given moment. The focus in loving is not in ourselves, but in others. Because by nature, Christian love is ready for self-denial. We deny ourselves our comfort zone, right? We're all here. Alam ko, some of us live very far, right? We're all, but we're all here. We're listening to, essentially, God's words because of our love for God, right? And this is because we are ready to deny ourselves our comfort zone. Malayo tayo sa bahay natin, but yet we're all here. We could have been 
uh, going somewhere. We could be maybe broke as a one chai. Oh, we're in one chai, <laughs> but maybe we're not here. We're not in a church. We may be somewhere in a bar drinking and all that. But instead, we choose to come here for our brothers and sisters. We choose to come here for God because we love God and we want to listen to what He wants to. He wants us to hear. Amen. 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 Very good. Uh, my ex-girlfriend is asking the mic for me, so I'll just... Okay. So, the next one is, love is not manipulative. What is manipulative means? I can only think of an example for now. Do you know, like, in Tagalog, we call... Ah, it's not Tagalog. Do you know, under... Under Andres. Visaya. Yes. Andres. 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 So, that is one... I think that is one... Uh, one example of being manipulative. Another part, uh, another kind of being manipulative is uh, speaking about friends or let's say in, in here office mates. So do we love our office mates or do we like them when they do good things to us and then unlove them when they do something that is not good? Yeah. Ay, mukhang may nakaka-relate yung office mates. So actually, I think human nature, some, some kind of human nature, but I have to share something with you because of the first two scriptures that we have shown earlier, like we call it life changers for, for both of us. Uh, after we, we read that before, actually it's in, the, it's in the CLS that we have attended before. So how do we love and unlove others? So when they do something good, oh, you're okay. When they do something not nice, Okay, I'm starting to hate you. Something like that. So how did we face that challenge? It's like this. So in the office, of course we do have office mates that we like and we don't like. Like some people, you just see them, ah, this, this person offended me once or twice. So I don't, I don't want him to do the same thing to me for the third time. So I will just avoid the person. And sometimes when you see him in the morning, it's like your day is like, I don't want to see this person. My day is already like, you know, wasted. But after these two readings, it turned out to be like, so when you see the person in the office, it's like, when you go, you, when you walk into the office, it's like, Lord, new day, positive, good vibe, something like that. And then I see the person. Oh, Lord, so early you want me to prove my love for you. <laughs> because, <laughs> because, you know, you can God is not here. He's not physically here. Earlier, we learned how to love God from afar because He's not here. We cannot physically touch Him. We cannot talk to Him. So loving our neighbor is our way of loving God in the flesh. So, and then when they say, oh, Jesus Christ said, love your neighbor, it doesn't, he, doesn't, he didn't mention any condition. It means we should love our neighbor, whoever they are. So this office mate who offended you like several times, you should still love that person. So when you see that person, when I see the person, it's like, oh, Lord, this person again. Thank you. This, I have proven again my love for you, Lord. So <laughs> it's like that. Or it's, it's an everyday struggle. It's an everyday struggle. But you need to consider that he even told us to love our enemies. But the least we can do, human beings, as who human as we are, is to pray, pray for them, which is actually already hard. Like someone offended you and you pray for the person, you say, Lord, bless this person who stole my lunchbox, whatever. It's actually very hard. But that act is actually a form of prayer already. You know, actually before, uh, when I confess to every first Friday, I, I try to confess. Um, by the way, they said it's very powerful because the prayer of a righteous person, the righteous in a positive way, the prayers of a righteous person shoots up to heaven like 100 times better than the person who's not. So I think the, the thing, the, my thing is that, or I can, maybe I can share with you, do as much as you can, part of loving our neighbors is to, is to go to confession as much as you can. Because if you pray for other people and you are clean yourself, 
your prayers get, you know, shoots up faster. That's what I've learned from Father I mean. And they get they get hurt because of course God likes as much as he likes, you know, the sinners and everyone, we're all sinners. But he appreciates, I think, the fact that we want to move closer to him. So confession is a way for us to become closer to God. That's in the back door. Okay, so yeah, for the office mates and then for friends also. Of course, some of our friends do this. I have a sharing again. Like when I was still in the Philippines, I was in SF SFC. Of course, in the community, there are some people that, ah, he will speak again in the front. I don't think he's doing whatever, whatever he or she's talking. I don't want to listen. So that was my attitude. But then after this, again, I was like, okay, why am I looking at that person as a person? Why am I not looking at that person as someone that God sent to send the, the message to you? Because, for example, us, we are only empowered and we are only instruments. If without empowerment from God, we cannot say anything. Because we're not actually, you know, the best people to, you know, like, I, I'm not sure who can say, who here can say, like, I'm the best person to, to teach people how to love other people. Right? Because we all have our shortcomings. But with God's grace, we're all here. And then the next is... So what is Christian love? What does God mean by love? Okay. So the, the, the answer is in the book of John. So... Through this reading, as the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. If you keep my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commands and remain in this love. What does this mean? It means that loving others or love, loving others or loving God is not compatible with sin. That's why we were given the Ten Commandments. And actually, if we follow the Ten Commandments, which is summarized into two, sold na tayo. Uh, and then, um, so keeping the commandments and loving is not compatible with sinning. And then the next one is, my command is this, love each other as I have loved you. It's actually very, you know, like, because the love of God is immeasurable. It's very great. Like, every time I remember it, I try to remember how God loves me every morning. It just, it makes my day. It, it makes me feel like I'm the luckiest or the most blessed person there ever is on earth. And maybe you can also try to start your day with that. But, um, so, how, this is Christian love. He divided into three. So, the first one, it means that, Loving is not compatible with sin. The second one is, love each other as I have loved you. So this is how we love each other. And then the third one is, make him as an example on how to love other people. Like, greater love has no one than this. To lay, to lay down one's life for one's friends. So those are the three. Okay. But most of all, but most of us, because yung third natin is make Jesus an example, eh, diba he died for us. But we here, we're quite lucky because we are not called to die for others. Like what he did. We are called to live for others. So we must live for others. How do we live for others? We must share Christ to others. Again, example, pero actually we have more than that. A lot more than that. So, you can do it in your everyday life. How can you live for others? Be good parents. Serve the poor. Do not slack off in your jobs. Walang petics. <laughs> do, <laughs> do not gossip. Walang chismis. Kahit corporate chismis pa yan, pareho rin yung Offer your seat sa NPR. Huwag magtulog-tulugan pag may matanda or may movies. Embrace. 
you don't know how em how an embrace can you know can alter one's one's bad day. Smile or offer help even to strangers. Don't be late. <laughs> Why not be late? Because not being late is actually respecting the time of other people. So that's a form of respect. Evangelize. When you say evangelize, it doesn't it doesn't mean like you actually need to stand in front of 10,000 people to evangelize. You can evangelize through the things that you do every day. Through these things. Pray for those who offend you. And most of all, be a good Christian example at all times. Because people will see this. People will see this in you. Let's say in the office, you're in the office and everybody knows you're a Catholic. Kalimutan muna natin. Huwag muna natin ilagay na CFC. Alam na lang you're a Catholic. And then you're showing not so good attitude. What do you think they will think of Catholics? People are very, very prone to stereotyping other people. So, whatever we do, whatever we say, we always have to be very good example because this is the way we evangelize to other people. Malay mo, makakuha pa tayo magka-Catholic. Okay, so everyone following uh, at, at, at this point? No? Yes. All right. So uh, Jeannie has already explained no, in the first part, uh, in the first part, uh, she has already explained uh, why there is a need to love our neighbor. And she has also explained what Christian love is not. What are the common misconceptions of Christian love? Actually, I'm going to explain. <laughs> and then, right now, she has just explained uh, what is Christian love, all right? What God means by Christian love. So, all of those that, uh, all of those of what she has just said to smile, to embrace, uh, to not be late, to serve other people, and everything. Now, all this boils down to service, right? Christian love is dedicated service to our brothers and our sisters. Now, it says in the Gospel, uh, Galatians 5, 13 to 14. Let's read together. You, my brothers and sisters, were called to be free, but do not use your freedom to indulge the flesh. Rather, serve one another humbly in love, for the entire law is fulfilled in keeping this one command. Love your neighbor as yourself. So beautiful now. Uh, it just it just it's just so meaningful that God has commanded us to love our neighbors as how we love ourselves. Do we want something wrong for ourselves? Do we want our, uh, do we want something bad for ourselves? Diba no? We always want the best for ourselves. And that goes also for our family. So if we are to love our brothers and sisters, our neighbors, then we should also pour out that love, that same love that we will give to ourselves to them as well. Amen? Amen. 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 Very good, children. <laughs> right. Now, uh, so this is already clear. And at this point, no, when we say love your neighbors, are we clear here who exactly our neighbors are? Uh, who exactly are neighbors? Any ideas? Anyone? No? Next to your flat. Your family, your wife, Sister Charm. Your children. Your children. Amen. All right. And the answer is this. Who is your neighbor? Um, you, we all know the story about the uh, Good Samaritan. Yeah. yeah, we all know the story about the Good Samaritan. No? So, um, this is a perfect example of loving your neighbor. The Samaritan and the Jews have a history of hate. Amen? That was in the Bible. Now, in this story, it is very remarkable for the Samaritan to help the Jew who was robbed. He was in need. He was actually dying, I think. And uh, binugbog siya, uh, he was beaten and everything. And this Samaritan passed by, right? He helped him. Uh, gave him food, clothed him, and even gave him money to stay at an inn to heal himself of his wounds and everything. But this Samaritan 
did not even know this person. And that, I think, is a true definition of a neighbor, right? So in here, what we can say is that all persons in need of our help are considered our neighbor. Amen. All right? So it's not just uh, our immediate, uh, you know, our immediate family, uh, the, our, our, our spouse, our children, but instead everyone. Everyone. And that is why we do service. Right? And that's why we have to work for the poor, charity, and everything else. And this is one way of expressing our love to our neighbors. And going back to that, if we are to start loving, Shepre, it would be great for us to start loving within our family. Amen? Amen. Because our family are our closest. Amen. Very good. Starting with our spouse. Starting with our children. You know, our in-laws. No, 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 no. Seriously, our in-laws. Uh, <laughs> you know, and, uh, the the, uh, the lolos and lolas, um, you know, our children, na minsan, is napakapulit, right? We start with them first. We love them. And our spouses, right? Uh, sometimes, no, seriously though, uh, what she said earlier was true. To love is a commitment. Now, this commitment will stay true. Um, until you know the sparks have gone away, the feelings, uh, you know this mushy mushy feeling have all disappeared. When the law of gravity takes place, it bumagsak na lahat ng pwede bumagsak sa atin, makulut na or 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 magusot na lahat ng pwede magusot sa atin. But that love will always be there. That commitment will always be there. Amen. Amen. And that is what God means about loving our neighbor. That same commitment. At for richer, for poorer, for good, or for worse, we will be there to love our spouses. Wow. <laughs> All right. Okay, so, how do we love in our everyday life? Right? Now, I think the best description of this would be the characteristics of Christian love as defined in the Bible. Now, I will read this verse to you. I will read this verse by myself because we have a, a little activity later. In 1 Corinthians 13, verses 4 to 8, it says there, Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, and always perseveres. Okay? Now, I'll just, just, for, just, just uh, for discussion's sake, I guess, I'll go through each and every characteristic briefly. Being patient. What are these? These are the people in the hospital, right? Patient. <laughs> no, 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 just kidding, just kidding. Uh, people that are patient, you know, love is slow to anger, you know, able to give allowance for the shortcomings of other people, right? Being patient. Now, who here are impatient? <laughs> Very good. Now, I mean, it's, it's true. I mean, uh, in, in, in everyday life, we experience this. We go to work, and uh, we're very tired. When we get home, Daddy, Daddy, play with me, play with me. Or sometimes, Daddy, Daddy, water, water on the floor. Oh, water on the floor. So, you know, the, the, sometimes you just want to... Your children, and, and that, you know, that being patient is exactly the opposite of that, right? And that is something that is very hard to do. However, that is one characteristic of Christian love. The second, love is kind. It is not an attitude of criticism as it says here, but speech that builds up and encourages. Right? Being kind is to give or to uplift our brothers and sisters. Not to criticize, not to find wrong 
in anything that they do. But instead, give encouragement. Uplift them. Right? So that they would be better encouraged to do better in their lives and be better Christians in future. Love is not jealous. Jelly. <laughs> All right? I mean, especially for the couples, no? Especially for the single couples. Who, who here are couples but, well, I mean, the Gigi, as, as we call it, in, this, in a relationship, not yet married. Wala naman. Everyone is married. Okay, all the more. Now, in, in, a, uh, in, a, in a marriage, no? uh, I think it's, especially I think in the States, no? where, uh, where, where I think adultery is very uh, prevalent, I guess. Uh, I think uh, this is one very important trait for us, no? because most of the time, uh, wrongdoings are prompted by jealousy. Sakal, sobra. When you ask that person, why did you do this? Why? I don't have space. Eh? Uh, I'm always being accused. You know, uh, I'm being, I'm, I'm, I'm always, uh, uh, well, being begrudged for having something else or for for having something that you do not have. That is uh, one characteristic of love. Like I said, not being jealous. Next one. I will just, I'll just make this quicker. Uh, next one, love is not pompous or inflated, right? Have to be humble. Okay, and then the next one is love is not rude. We have to honor and respect one another. I think this is clear, self-explanatory. Love is not self-seeking, explained earlier. It's not self-centered, but instead centered for other people. No? It's for the service of other people. Love is not quick-tempered, okay? We do not explode at the most little of things, okay? Love is not brooding over injury. What does this mean? This means that we do not hold grudges other people. We forgive. We forgive, we forget at the same time, and we move on, okay? Love rejoices with the truth. Is it there? Yes, right? Uh, telling the truth to one another, not telling lies, not saying gossip. Love forbears. We can bear insult, we can bear injury, disappointment, without taking uh, action. Walang gantihan, in other words. Amen? Uh, love also trusts giving the people, giving your brothers and sisters the benefit of the doubt. Believing the best about other people. Love hopes. And this is having a positive attitude towards life and problems. Right? We always smile in, uh, in spite of the difficulties of life. And we can remain joyful and peaceful under any circumstance. We do not lose hope. And that is also the same hope and the same love that we give to our other brothers and sisters who are losing hope. That is one way of actually loving them and giving them hope. And last, love endures, right? Love can bear all things, not within passive resignation, but triumphant fortitude. What this means is you endure every hardship that comes your way, and you believe, you believe that through the love of Christ and through your love to your brothers and sisters, Christ will prevail and Jesus will win in our lives. Amen? Amen. 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 Now, for a short activity, you remember that passage that I read? That is the characteristic of Christian love. But now I would like to invite everyone to read it this time and exchange some of the words and make this a sort of our commitment, sort of our challenge to ourselves on loving our neighbors. With me, one, two, three. I am patient, I am kind, I do not envy, I do not boast, I am not proud. I do not dishonor others. I am not self-seeking. I am not easily angered. I keep no record of wrongs. I do not delight in evil, but I rejoice with the truth. I always protect. I always trust. I always hope. And I always persevere. So, brothers and sisters, I'll just pass this back to my wife for the conclusion. Okay. 
So can we, do we think we can live with those I am, I will, I whatever? Yes. I yeah. Will. <laughs> you will, yes, we will. Okay. We can do it. We have to. Okay, so Christian love, as a conclusion, Christian love is a command. It is essential to Christianity. So you cannot call, or we cannot call ourselves Christians if we don't love. So, but you know, actually, I learned from my mom before. Sorry, uh, two minutes. <laughs> uh, I learned from my mom before because it's actually like this. Like, when you love someone whom you really should love, like, for example, parents. You love your parents, of course. You love your brothers. You love your sisters because it's a given. They're your brothers. They're your sisters. You don't have a choice. You have to love them. Or we were born to love them. But when we love people who are who we don't know, like loving people who cannot return the favor, that's you know that's more meaningful. When we try to love people who cannot return the love to us, uh, doing favor for people whom we have seen once and there's like a 97% chance that we're not going to see the person again, that's actually great love. Okay. And then, of course, when we say that I am, I can, I will, whatever, it does it sound difficult? Like I am kind, I am, I am uh, patient, I am not jealous. Is it difficult? May not be consistent. Yes. <laughs> so, Shepherd, the answer is human as we are. It is very difficult. But we have to remember this important thing. Mere human effort will always, always fail. But nothing is impossible with God's help. So we always need to seek for the grace of God to guide us through all of these things. You always go back to the scriptures. You always go back to the two scriptures, the two life changers that we have shown earlier. Love your neighbor. Love your neighbor. Love God. Love your neighbor. You always go back to those things. It will be like your guiding torch towards, you know, towards being a better Christian. Okay, so another sharing. And dami ko ng sharing. So our guiding principles, we just like to share our guiding principles in making decisions. So in which ways can I express more love for others? It's always like that whenever you make decisions. Always think of how you can serve others the best way that you can. Always, always think of how many people can I, can I bring to Christ. It's not actually bringing, people to, uh, bringing Christ to the people. That's a difficult task. So if you cannot bring people to Christ, you bring Christ closer to the people. That's actually how you show love to others. Because you're, you're giving them this cause and effect or you're giving them this thinking that I should love Christ and I should love my neighbor through the teachings or through whatever you say or do. And whatever we do to our neighbors is actually our offering, our prayer for ourselves and our offering to God. As It's like partaking... You know, partaking some, you know, partaking some of Jesus' sacrifices or taking our share in Jesus, in Jesus' face. It's something like that. Okay, so. Uh, yes, uh, just one last thing no, before I go. Sorry, uh, one minute, one minute. <laughs> uh, for me, no, no, I just want to uh, say something before we, uh, you know, before we finally conclude. And I think there's a group discussion, no? There will be a group discussion. Um, the characteristics of Christian love that I have just enumerated, that we have just described, are truly difficult. In fact, for me, I admit that maybe for most of us, well, actually for myself, I admit that it is impossible for me. It is impossible for me to be able to follow all of those. But, you know, God loves us so much. God loves us so much. And this, I really believe, uh, going back to that scripture earlier. And hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured into our hearts 
through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. What does this mean? For me, my reflection on this is that God has actually given us the power to love. To love with all our capacity, with all our capability. And as we say, nothing is impossible without God's help. But we already have this power within ourselves in the first place. When God made our body the temple of the Holy Spirit and sent us the Holy Spirit through our baptism, we already inherited the power to love. And therefore, we are capable of loving like a true Christian. Amen? So that is our challenge to each and every one of you, that we may be able to find ways to always see how we can uh, express our love to our neighbors, to our brothers and sisters, much more especially to the people that we don't know and we know that we will never see again. Amen. May God be praised. Amen. Thank you for our wonderful couple, Sister Jeannie and Brother Mark.